I used to be a 911 dispatcher. Sounds very intense. Yeah. Well, you would go from, like, eating Hot Pockets to, like, someone getting shot in the stomach. <laughs> I like that somebody uh, getting shot in the stomach makes you laugh, that fond memory of that phone call. Call from... Johnny. Hello? Hey, Gek. Hey, Johnny. What's going on? Not much, Gek. How are you tonight? I'm doing good. Um, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling actually uh, a lot better than I have in a while. So you've caught me... Yeah. On a nice um, mental day. What's going yeah, on, you man? Seem, you seem super refreshed and happy. It's good to see, you, man. Is that true? I don't. I I never have any yeah. idea how I'm like. And I, I actually I appreciate you saying this to me because I never have any idea uh, how I'm coming off. Um, do I have do, okay. it, like have I been acting depressed? No, I, I don't mean to say that. I think like tonight, it just seems like you're super, you're super pumped, you know, like, like you're just like, it's not to say your baseline is bad, my man, you know, it's just like, I can tell that you're, you're doing good tonight, you know? Well, good, man. I'm glad I, you know, well, it's funny since I've been doing this for close to three years now, it's not even three years. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And throughout that whole time, um, you know, it's, it's sometimes I show up to do this and I'm, like, really, uh, uh, fe I feel very present and, like, with everybody and mm -hmm. ready and excited. And then other times I show up, like, d fucking feeling like I'm I'm dead and, um, and I, and I, ha I hate I hate that because it feels like it's, it almost feels like it's out of my control. But yeah. uh, I, I, there, I don't know what, I, I've always tried to find the equation, right? Like... Is it an? Is, should I drink an energy drink beforehand? Should I stop, you know, eating weird? Is it just? Am I just getting tired from doing it too much? I don't, I don't know. But um, I feel like uh, that's part of the human condition, you know. Like I had nights, I have nights like that or days like that when I show up to work and I have like a really good day, and I'm like, why can't I fucking have this good day all the time? You know, like why yeah. can't I be this pumped about doing what I'm doing all the time? You know, and yeah. it's almost like disappointing. You know, because you're like, what the fuck am I doing every other time? <laughs> but, man, I think that that's just like a human thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've, yeah. Got, I've gotten down on myself every once in a while because I'm like, man, you know, people go to work at fucking Chipotle for eight hours scooping, like, chicken and stuff. And I am, like, feeling bad about, you know, the, the two hours that I spend, uh, you know, talking to people who are excited to come talk I, it just makes me i i get like i beat myself up about it oh, but um dude, you know i've learned to not I, I don't care like i don't care if you have the happiest job ever like if you're like a fucking person who adores dogs and you just get to cuddle cute dogs all day you're gonna have days where you're not fucking feeling your job you know you're gonna have yeah. days or even if you're doing the coolest thing ever you're like i would rather be at home playing video games or whatever you know man so like you're doing you're doing great and i'm super super pumped to see what, see what you're doing. It's really a cool time to be a Gex fan because it's well, pretty Well, thanks, pretty man. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, you're man. Welcome. You know, so yes, yeah, so you're right. Sometimes you have days where the dogs are nice and sometimes you have days where the dogs try to bite your wiener off and you just got to accept true. it. That's um, true. What is your name? My name is Johnny. Johnny. Johnny Be Good. Johnny Rocket. You ever been to Johnny Rockets? Yeah, the one near me closed like five years ago, though, so I haven't been to one in forever. But they're pretty cool. Um, what's going What's going on with you, Johnny? What's going on in the universe? Yeah, so I'm just kind of chilling. But I called tonight because I used to be a nine one one dispatcher, and I wasn't sure if like I have some pretty crazy stories and stuff. So I wasn't sure if you, like, had any questions for me. Because I know, like, you know, it's the kind of career that people, like, see on TV and shit. And, you know, it's kind of just a, something that people might have questions about, you know? A 911 dispatcher. That sounds very intense. Yeah. Well, yes. It oscillated between being really intense and for sitting for, like, three hours waiting for something to happen at like two o'clock in the morning you know so you would go from like drinking lukewarm coffee lukewarm coffee and eating hot pockets to like 
someone getting shot in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that somebody uh, getting shot in the stomach makes you laugh. That fond memory of that phone call. Um, to, I want to okay. Before we listen, I'm sure. Here's the thing. I'm sure you have a ton of horrific and depressing things that we could get mm-hmm. into, which I'm down to get into. Okay, I'm not. You know, I'm not yeah. uh, shy of things that are uh, horrific and depressing. But before we right. do that, um, wh- are Tell me, have you? How many prank calls have you gotten, or how many people have like called nine one one because, um, you know, they missed their bus or spilled coffee on themselves or things like that? It's quite a few, you know. So like, well, so for the actual nine one one line, you get that sometimes, especially because I live in a state. I, I live in Maine, so there's a lot of like crazy storms and stuff, you know. So. We'll get people who will call 911 and be like, when is my power going to come back on after a storm, you know? And it's like, we're fucking 911. We don't know when your power is going to come back on, you know? So it's like stuff like that. Or like people treating 911 like it's their own personal army, you know? Like you call 911 and be like, my neighbor is parked in my parking space and I want you to send a cop out <laughs> to arrest them, you know? We got a ton of stuff like that where people just, like, felt like they were entitled to get the police called on, like, minor inconveniences to them, you know, which was Mm. super, super annoying. In terms of, like, prank calls, though, yeah, there were some. Um, There there were some. They happened more, like, on our business line because we had had a line where people could call in for, like, non-emergencies that we had to answer to. So, like, pretty consistently... So pretty consistently, we'd get people that would call for something like, because uh, we have towns in Maine that are named after countries, right? So there's like a Mexico, Maine, you know, and they would call in thinking that they were talking to like the Mexico police, like the country of Mexico. And I would have to spend like 15 minutes explaining to them that they're calling a town of like 1000 in Maine and not like the country of Mexico, you know? They'd be like, were, they, were they prank? Were they they were they calling? Uh, no. They thought they were prank calling Mexico. No, no, it wasn't even a prank call. It was, it was it was actually like people being like, "I haven't heard from my 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 cousin, and they went on a vacation to Mexico, and I need the police and stuff." You know, so it just was like that was super confusing <laughs> for everyone involved. Oh no, that, that like it's not. You're not, you're calling, you're not calling Mexico the country, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel like the cartel does not have a huge presence in Mexico, Maine. No, not at all. No, not at all. Um, like, I'm trying to, like, pranks, there were some creepy people that would just, like, call in and just be, like, more, like, there, there were a lot of people with, like, grudges, right? Like, they thought that they had been wronged by the police before and you know like probably had but they would call in and like try to like mess with dispatchers and be like i know where you live and stuff and if you don't like if you don't like get the officer to apologize to me i'm gonna come over and blah 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 you know like did anyone did anyone target you specifically did you get anybody who like threatened you um no but i got called an idiot like 45 times a day you know i would be like really? yeah i would be like sorry there's nothing i can do that your dog that your dog got out and got sick from someone else's trash can and they'd be like you fucking idiot i'm gonna get you fired like blah <laughs> you know <laughs> like it's yeah um, well, here's – okay, here's my question, and this is stupid. But yeah. in in a town of only a 1,000 people, um, mm-hmm. does the bar for what constitutes an emergency lower? Yeah, that's a really good question, and it kind of like – it oscillates, you know, because, you know, we have a very – the county that I worked in was a very rural county, right? Uh, and it had a very, like, prevalent – elderly population you know like like a lot of elderly people yeah. so you would get people that would call in the non-emergency line and be like 
my chest hurts and I think I'm having a stroke. And you'd be like, why the fuck aren't you calling 911? You know? And they're like, I didn't want to bother you. Like, <laughs> you're like eight, right? And it's yeah. like, Jesus Christ, Edna, call 911 the next time you think your husband is having a heart attack, you know? And then yeah. you would get people who are like, there's a there's a black SUV that's parked at the post office for 10 minutes and it has Massachusetts plates. So this is an emergency, you know? Right. They're the ones that you, those are the ones that call the emergency line. Yeah. 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 Or like someone, someone turned around in my driveway. It's like, mm. okay, cool. Like what, <laughs> what, <laughs> what do you want to happen? You know, it's just like, yeah. And th the thing about it though, is it like jumps from really dumb, like just mind numbingly stupid stuff like that to like really intense terrible things in like three seconds you know right so you right. could put that phone to someone who was just being a completely like a dumbass you know and then pick up the phone and have like a legitimate terrifying emergency you know and it's like that whiplash that like because when you like watch like 911 dispatchers on tv and stuff you know it's like all action all the time like falls to the wall emergency you know but it's not really like that because it's like half of your time is spent dealing with really dumb stuff <laughs> mm. and the other half is craziness mm. you know so i mean tell me about the craziness how did you deal with that i mean you being the first line of of uh of kind of defense against these kinds of things and talking to people who are in like shock and crisis like how do you how do you do that yeah so it's like it's tough um i so i worked as a 911 dispatcher for two years and i worked with people who had worked for worked there for like decades plus you know and it's i think it's a really easy it's a really easy field to get burned out from right because there are some people that kind of treat it just like you follow you follow the you follow the procedure no matter what, you know? So, but then there are, I tried to not be like that. You know, I tried to put myself in the shoes of like, these are actual people calling who are going through like the worst times in their lives and they need help, you know? But that also like weighs on you. So like <laughs> you have to put like some sort of distance between yourself and them. Right. So, yeah, I mean, like, when I, I remember when I, so, you know, like in driver's ed, when you are learning to drive and your driver instructor is on, has like their own brake pedal on the other side. So they can like stop you. Right. Right. Like, yeah. So when you're learning how to be a 911 dispatcher and they're training you on the phone, you have your phone and then your trainer has like a phone that they're also listening in on. So they can like cut your line at any time and take over themselves, you know? So I remember it was like my first day, like being on the actual 911 lines, right? And I took like a bullshit call and then I picked up and it was just this woman who was like so terrified because her neighbor's house was on fire, right? Um, and like I just had a moment where I was like, holy shit, like this is actually happening somewhere, you know? And like this woman is actually like terrified that her neighbor didn't make it out of his house, you know? And it just like reconciling like my response with the reality of what was happening. Mm -hmm. It was just super, super weird, you know? And then I like stumbled through for a second and then my trainer took over. <laughs> but that was like the kind of, it's like literally trial by fire, you know? They just like mm -hmm. throw you in and you got to learn how to, how to deal with that. And eventually it becomes easier because I think of it more like, I think of it more like as I'm doing my job for, for like the people that are going to respond, you know? So like before right. ambulance rolls up, the ambulance need to know, needs to know what's happening. So it's my, it was my job to like paint the picture for them of like what's going on. Like, do they need the fire? Like, is this person like, you know, what does this person need on scene and how do I convey that? the ambulance crew or the police or the fire department you know but looking at it like that kind of helps because i was taking a step back and being like what do i do to make sure this person gets the help that they need instead of just like 
holy fuck, this person is going through something fucking crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. What was it, so what was it uh, that made your trainer press press the brake pedal? You said you stumbled. In what way did you stumble? <laughs> because I was like, okay, so the very first thing, like, it, so like, it's never, the very, like, if you are dealing with a 911 dispatcher who's, like, been trained at all, the very first thing you ask is, 911 what's the address of the emergency it's not 911 what's your emergency it's not like 911 what's the emergency it's 911 what is the address of your emergency like you're supposed to say that before like say anything you know so the fact so i didn't say that the, the first seconds of the call and like was kind of taken aback by the like how freaked out the woman was you know and i couldn't really like interject to ask that question so after me trying to get my shit together for like five or ten seconds my trainer hopped in the call you mm. know because i wasn't getting anywhere um um so, have you so so th that was your very first call where somebody was very much distressed and that kind of threw you off yeah 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 it was kind of like yeah it was the the real moment you know because you do mm. But my training was like a bunch of classroom hours and stuff and like being actually like out on the floor when the calls are being taken is like a completely other like a new beast, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So then moving forward after you've talked and you've, you've spoke to people in crisis like over and over again, it, does it just become less shocking to you or do you just deal with how to handle it? better yeah so it's like it does become less shocking some of because there's there's calls that you get on a pretty regular basis you know there are are like medical emergencies heart attacks strokes stuff like that they happen pretty much every day every shift you know so it's like those kind of things start to become less shocking um in the beginning and like the progression of me like getting okay with it like in the beginning what really fucking threw me off is like listening to people actively like struggle to breathe and stuff like during those calls you know like when you get a yeah. person on who's like having a heart attack and like physically can't breathe you like panic with them a little bit you know mm. but like after after a bit kind of look at it like clinically you know and you're just like I'm not a doctor. I don't know how a doctor would think about it, but I would think it'd be kind of the same thing as like a medical, like a, like a medically minded person, right? You kind of just think like, okay, they're having symptoms and now I need to talk them like through it, you know? Um, but like, there are like, there were, so domestic violence happens a lot too, especially during the pandemic. Like, there was a lot of really terrible societal things that happened during the pandemic. And unfortunately we saw a big spike in um, like violence like that, you know? So that never really got easy. Like those are always terrible things to deal with. Um, but uh, what helps though, is just thinking about like, what do I need to, to get people to respond to this emergency and what do I need to get people there safely, you know? And mm. what do I need to help people, you know? So mm. I started kind of thinking about it like that and it made, like, the emotions sort of go away, but then there would just be calls that, like, just shake you the fuck up, you know? Like, there are some calls that are just, like, they wake you up, <laughs> you know? And right, you've got people like it calling about their uh, parking space being blocked, and so you're just like, "Oh, what even is this bullshit job?" And then all of a sudden, you get some real thing, and, you, and it wakes you up. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, and all like for sure. But also, though, it's a little bit scary to like think about to get at the end of like a six hour shift and be like, "I dealt with like someone dying of a heart attack. I dealt with like all of these things," and you're like. I don't really feel anything, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then there are some calls that just no matter what, no matter how burnout you are, they're just fucking terrible. Like anything to do with kids 
is fucking awful. Mm-hmm. Um, anything with like you like anything where people like I don't know like die <laughs> yeah. is pretty. Yeah. You know, so like, yeah. um, yeah, and I mean another. <laughs> So I, and it's also important to mention that I work the night shift, you know? So I would go in at like 6 p.m. and stay until 8 a.m. Um, so we would have like three or four hours of downtime sometimes, like at night, you know, when nothing was happening. So you would just be like playing Stardew Valley. I would be playing Stardew Valley or whatever on my phone and then get a call that was just like, what the fuck is happening right now you know so yeah um yeah and another another call um uh that i got late at night that was absolutely crazy was um a guy whose best friend shot himself playing russian roulette Mm. and best friend called in and was like, I just watched my friend like shoot himself in the face. <laughs> that was pretty fucking terrible. Um, and that again was during my training. So that was during your training. I, did they? Did you? Yeah. Did you take that whole one yourself, or did they have to hit the brakes? No. Well, so so the way it worked, this is probably like my fourth or fifth night of taking calls. But like, the guy called in and was just super panicked. I got basically like where he was and what happened. And then he hung up. So my trainer after that was like, okay, take a seat. Like I'm going to deal with this now. So she took over after that. But like, I still dealt with like, you know, uh, getting the ambulances there and getting the police there and stuff. But that was another like trial by fire moment. Because it was like, you could just hear the raw fucking panic in this guy's voice, you know? Mm. Mm. But can I tell you, you a kind of funny story now? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would love I would love to hear a, a funny story. It, there are certainly funny stories. So this was like, we, um, we're, we're on the border of, of another, of, of New Hampshire, right? And, uh, so we, we get a call from this, uh, <laughs> this lady who's like, I own a greenhouse and someone just broke in and stole a bunch of my pot and le- weed is legal in Maine. Right. So we heard greenhouse and pot and thought that this lady probably owned like a, you know, growing, you know, like, like grew pot. And we're yeah. like, okay. So we get a description of like the trucks that supposedly like, like broke into the, into the greenhouse. Right. And this lady, sorry, this lady's, uh, Lady's like, yeah, my husband's behind them. He's tailing them. You know, he like gave us all the license plates and stuff. So we're treating this like, like these trucks broke into this house, broke into this place, like possible armed robbery, like getting everyone going, like chasing these trucks, right? And the eventually, like the cops follow the trucks into New Hampshire. So now we're all like, holy shit! It's like a fucking multi-state like right felony. crossing state lines, yeah. Yeah, and and then like the cops are like, we got two suspects out on gu- out at gunpoint, blah 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 blah, you know. And then we just don't hear from them for for a while, and we're like, okay, that's kind of normal. They're probably doing a bunch of like paperwork and whatever, you know. <laughs> so we kind of forget about it, but we're like, yeah, they got the bad guys. <laughs> and then like two hours later, this cop calls in, and he's like, guys, like what the fuck. So when the lady said they stole my pot, pot, she was talking about terracotta pot from the greenhouse. This greenhouse wasn't a pot greenhouse. It was just like a place where it was a greenhouse. Like she sold, she sold plants, right? And she and the lady who called 911 forgot that she told a bunch of her elderly friends that they could borrow these pots. So these like three old ladies in trucks we're just loading up terracotta pots into the back of their truck that they were permitted to take. Like the lady told them she could take them. And they're just like going about their like old lady like lives. And, and all getting- of a sudden getting tailed by the police across state <laughs> yeah. lines. 
getting pulled out at gunpoint. It was kind of awful, but it was just like, oh my god. Wait, you know? wait, wait, wait. The, wait, they were, they were, they were uh, pulled over at gunpoint. Well, okay. So my memory might be embellishing this a little bit, but they, the cops certainly were not nice when they took them out of their cars. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so like uh. I, I can't I can't remember if it was gunpoint or not, but there I felt so fucking bad. I'm like these poor old ladies, you know, like uh <laughs> but That is that's so was, interesting that uh, wait where where was this again? This was in um Maine. In Maine, yeah. And and weed is legal. That's so interesting that, you know, cops well, you used to like if your weed was stolen, you can't do shit about it. But now you can actually call the cops on people for stealing your weed and they will yeah. uh, uh, arrest them at gunpoint and then figure out that they're just mm-hmm. nice old ladies. Yeah, it is kind of funny. Like, uh, we've made a lot of progress if you think about it like that. <laughs> well, now, here's what I was here's what I wanted to ask you. Here's what I wanted to ask yeah. you is uh, – so I know that it's, like, illegal to, like, call 911 and fuck with them and stuff. So, like, this lady, for example, who was like, oh, mm-hmm. oopsie, I forgot I could uh, – I lent them the fucking pots. Did she, like, get in trouble? No, probably not. Because to be charged with, like, misuse of 911, it has – you have to prove that you're intentionally fucking with the 911 system, you know? So, like – if you make a mistake in good faith, then it's not like then it's not like you're gonna get in any trouble, you know. Um, mm. It's more like if you're intentionally like messing with the 911 system or like talk millions because you don't like the response that you got and you want a better response or whatever, you know, that's when you start to get into trouble. But that lady probably didn't get in any trouble. Have you ever uh, had somebody call you that got charged with misuse of 911? Um, a couple times, yeah. So, it was like, and most of the time, I'm trying to think of the specific story. What it comes down to most of the time is you get someone, we deal with a lot of people who are just like drunk or stoned or high or whatever, you right. know? And they're in some sort of like distress, and that's awful. But, you know, they don't like the response that they got. So, they're like, I wanted, like, I wanted this person to be arrested, or I wanted this cop to do this thing, or this whatever so they keep calling and calling and calling and like expecting a different response you know and that's when people start that's when people start to like misuse 911 uh f- from like my experience is when they're like you didn't arrest this person like come back and arrest them right now like or you know you didn't this person or like i don't know this person dog is still in my yard come back right this second you know Mm. um but then like yeah yeah um so uh uh, i i at the time this is being recorded it's april 19th and you're having me wonder what it would be like to uh you know uh uh run the phones on 420 (laughs) i bet you get a (laughs) lot of very interesting calls yeah like it's funny because I'm, tr- I'm trying to think like, man, 420 is, 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 is I, w- I would much rather, I, I would much rather not be working on like St. Patrick's Day, right? Like 420, I feel like it's kind of just a thing where people chill. They like, they smoke and they just fucking like chill, you know, like. like right, they never really get into a lot of trouble. Are, yeah, like if you're stoned, I feel like you don't really want to call 911. Like that's every time I've been high, I've been like calling nine one one unless I'm like tripping my fucking balls off has not been on my agenda, you know. But like when you're shit faced, that's when oh, you yeah. start to like. Well, that's when you start to make some questionable nine. <laughs> that's when you're more apt to call nine one one. I feel like like dealing with DUIs on like New Year's is like crazy like there oh, are i so, bet that's gnarly i bet there's a shit ton of them there are so many it's like because i did um I, I worked in this um i worked in uh that rural main county and then i worked for like the highway police uh for like a couple months uh but like the highway police um on the uh, uh like like the turnpike police on those holidays just dui after dui like 
it's fucking crazy. <laughs> hmm. Um, yeah. So, so what do you do now? Um, I am studying to be a teacher. What kind of and, teacher? Uh, uh, I want to be a middle or high school English teacher. A middle or high school English teacher. I'm really debating now what is going to be. Mo- I'm I'm excited for you to come back and let me know uh, what is more traumatic for you between um, being a 911 dispatcher and being a middle school teacher. Yeah, um, I think like it's gonna probably be a nine one one dispatcher. I know, it's <laughs> like funny. I know. Um, um, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 Gek. I so it's um, it's funny because it's like a whole different kind of uh, like stress, you know. Like being a teacher, it's a whole different kind of like problems that you have to solve. Right, but you know you've uh, you've are you've been through you've experienced so much fucked up shit already that I feel like your skin is hardened to deal with you know getting pencils thrown at you. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's um, it's like you know, it's kind of like the problems are solvable. You know, yeah. like like it's not like. Oh my god, I have this emergent thing. It's like, okay, let's take a seat and talk about what you did and why you fucked up and how you're not going to do this again kind of thing, right? When I was in middle school, I did either I think it was 7th grade or something. Um I had a music teacher and he had like um he had like a a, a these keys dangling from his belt. And I would like whenever he would walk by my desk, I would like swat at his keys all the time. Yeah. And yeah, he would tell yeah. me to and he would tell me to stop, but I was a little shit, so I wouldn't. And so I would it's I was good. swatting at his keys and he, he he at one point looked at me and he said, If you touch my keys one more time, I'm gonna punch you in the face. <laughs> and, and dude part and like you look, that guy like look, I didn't do it, but part of me was like, What's he gonna do? He can't punch me in the face. You know, yeah, and so I, right, I so, right. I, but I did, I didn't. I feel like, I feel like, here's the yeah. thing: if he had punched me in the face, I probably would have deserved it. But I, he, I mm-hmm. don't think he would have continued to be a, a teacher. No, it's true. So don't also punch test- kids in the face. Is I guess what I'm. Oh, I don't yeah. know why I, to- why I told you that, but look, but but it's also like it, it was a different time back then. You know, like, and I like the way the teaching has progressed because it's all about like positive ways to solve problems and like you know but also sometimes like the old school teachers that at the school are just like yo kid if you keep doing this like (laughs) like you know it's same same kind of deal you know and yeah i think there's like i'm glad we don't do that anymore but sometimes me too me too but i'm not gonna pretend like I don't like get why. I mean, look. Here's the thing: is I, I, being a middle school teacher, it sounds so hard that um, yeah. you know, I understand why the um, you know, human brain eventually throws up their hands and goes, "I'm gonna fucking kick the shit out of this mm-hmm. kid right now, swatting my keys." Yeah. Um, no. I mean, oh my god! You, I bet back in like uh, you know when I don't know when when Aristotle was teaching mm-hmm. people about philosophy and stuff, he probably wanted to, you know, punt those kids into oblivion. But you know what? Back in those days, just as just as there are in this days, like today, there was probably, like, rich parents, like, rich Roman parents who would have, like, waddled over in their fucking sandals and togas over to Aristotle and been like, if you touch my kid again, I'm going to fucking hang you or whatever, you know? Yeah, that's it's true. Like, that's true. There's, there's been shitty parents and, like, entitled parents and parents that don't actually parent and let their kids fucking run wild like since forever you know what and, got you into um doing the the 911 dispatching thing i was yeah i kind of job hopped for a while i got a degree in journalism and i like was working at a newspaper making like and it was more just like I wasn't making enough money, you know, and I saw that this uh, 911 dispatching uh, agency was hiring 
And I was like, this sounds cool and it pays more. So like kind of on a whim, I applied uh, and got it. <laughs> like I was not expecting to get it and just kind of like wound up there. Um, and I mean, like I stayed for two years and then the burnout was just in, like insane like it was oh you only met you only were able to do it for two years yeah and like what that mostly was like i think i would have got burned out no matter what but i was stuck on night shifts and like acclimating your body to like working consistently like living a night shift life is like mm -hmm. really rough you know mm -hmm. and i was also i switched agencies that i was working for and the sec and the last one when i got out i was working like tons of forced overtime shifts so like i would get i would work from like uh 11 p.m to like 7 a.m but basically mm -hmm. any time that they needed me to stay they would like force me to stay until uh uh 3 p.m so like three times a week i was working from 11 p.m to 3 p.m and then i would have an hour drive home and get like five hours like four Four and a half hours of sleep, actually, you, and have to come back. Did you ever have <laughs> fucked up dreams about the calls? Yes. All the, okay. So, like, you know, um, like, we we have, like, radio codes. Like, this is a 1947-147 over on North Boulevard, you know? Yeah. And I would, like, recite codes in my sleep. Like, oh my I would be, like, I would, like, wake up, and I'm, like, why am I rattling off codes right now, you know? And then, like... I have three cats, so, like, my cats got incorporated into my weird fever, like, dispatch dream, so I'd be like, my, I'd be like, Coda has a 949 on 10th Avenue, and we have to send, like, the ambulance, and then my other cats would, like, be characters in these dreams and be like, why isn't the ambulance there yet? And it was just a mess. Like my psyche was fucked up. <laughs> that actually, well, it's that actually sounds uh, uh, a a nine one one dispatcher ran uh, by cats actually sounds kind of adorable. Yeah, it would be very unhelpful, would, but adorable. Yeah, they'd be like, "Oh, you're having a heart attack? Have you swat? Have you tried swatting a full glass of water down from the cabinet? That might help." <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hmm. it sounds as though uh, 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 middle school teaching is going to be a little bit easier on your side. I mean, look, not that much easier, but uh, slightly easier no. than hearing about death and decay and, um, you know, the yeah. horrors of blocked parking spots all day. Yeah, it, it's going to be it's going to be better for sure. All right. Let me just did anybody. Uh, here's one. The first thing I wanted to ask you with, you know, a half hour ago is did anyone do any prank calls? that were intentionally to waste your time, but that also were undeniably funny? Let me think. Uh, no, most people are unoriginal. Like, most people are just boring. Like, there was nothing where I was like, this is actually clever, you know? Give me, give me, give me like, one. Give me one of the boring ones. Um... I literally got the refrigerator running once oh okay and i was like the fuck man <laughs> i don't know why this no go ahead and like okay so you know have you ever accidentally butt dialed 911 like no, on, no on i have <laughs> is that a, is okay, a common it's thing super, it's super easy to do and like very many of our calls are like butt dials right mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it'll be like someone calling in on like uh don't even realize that they called 911 and, like, we're legally obligated to, like, make sure that there's no emergency no matter what. So, like, we have to go through and respond to every single accidental 911 call, right? So, I would, like, call people. <laughs> like, my, my favorite. Okay. This is my favorite one. So, it was, like, 5, 5.30 in the morning. Someone called. Just, like, standard call them back, right? And this guy was clearly asleep. I, like, I say, hi, this is 911. You dialed. Our, our emergency number do you have an emergency and he's like uh what dude <laughs> yeah he just I'm has like, no idea hi he's yeah i'm like man this is 911 he's like uh no i'm fine and i'm like like uh what's your name can you confirm your address and he's like you know i don't really feel like doing that right now 
sorry. And then he like hung up. <laughs> so of course, like I have to keep calling back because like I need his information and stuff, you know. And like he gradually got more awake and like apologized. He's like, I didn't know if it was a dream or not. <laughs> and I'm like, no, uh, it's no. real. Life. Okay, so that guy, you don't charge that guy. That guy, you give him the no, benefit of the doubt. No, 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 no. And okay, also. Like a PSA for anyone like listening to this, right? Is that if you accidentally call nine one one, you are not in trouble. Like, just answer the phone when the nine one one dispatcher calls you back and explain that this is not an emergency, right? Because when you don't, we have to spend like an hour trying to like locate where you are, like send you texts. Like, it's so much easier if you either like call in again and are like, "Sorry, I fucked up," you know. Then try to like actively avoid the situation. <laughs> you know, like there's no trouble that comes from accidentally calling nine one one. Well, that's a shame that you don't you don't have any good prank calls. Um, I know, I know. I, I I don't know why I'm I, I'm I'm inserting various things for my life into this conversation, but uh, what my okay. one of the funniest things from my childhood that I can remember. And I don't. And looking back, I don't know if it's the. Actually, no. You know, no. I'll defend this is still very funny. My friend once called Red Robin. Yeah. We we were doing prank calls. He called Red Robin and he was like, "Hi, can I get a table for a thousand? <laughs> yeah. And isn't that good? Yeah. I'm not crazy, that's, right? That's hilarious. That's pretty. That's pretty funny. That's that's pretty funny. I'm just, anyway. I, I wasn't clever, like, clever enough to do stuff like that. Or I would, like, try, like, I remember I tried to do a prank call once, but I, like, got so sweaty and nervous that I, like, just hung up. I, like, couldn't do it <laughs> when I was, like, a teenager. <laughs> I'm like... Man, what's your what's your name again? Johnny. Johnny. Johnny be good. John, well, Johnny, yeah. are you... Ex- uh, uh, thanks for talking to me for so long about... Uh, Nine one one. I'm glad that you're uh, transitioning yeah. to something. Oh, actually, I was gonna say I'm glad you're transitioning to something less stressful, but it, it could be way worse. So I'm not gonna, um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna hold my breath. But I think you'll be okay. Like I said, I think you're. Um, I think if you can handle all the fucked up shit that you get as a nine one one operator, you know, you can handle. Um, you know, kids. I don't need man. Middle school. We know this is gonna launch us into a whole other conversation. But I. I shudder to think what the fuck is going on with middle schoolers these days because um with all the i'm gonna sound like an idiot but all the snapchatting tiktoking yeah shit you know just navigating well, that universe but but i think you're gonna do a great job johnny i i i believe in you um i, I appreciate it thank you do, very much is there anything else you want to say uh to to the people of the computer before we go um if you ever have to call 911 don't be a jerk that's about it. Not that you would, but just don't be a jerk. In general. Hey, thanks for calling, Johnny. <laughs> You're welcome, Gak. I love you, man. See you later. Hey, take care, man. Thank you. Here's the thing. If you ever want to call somebody, if you're thinking about calling 911 just to yell and cuss them out and say horrible things, just call me instead. We'll, I'll talk to you. I don't care. You can call me and cuss me out and say... Um, mean things to me take i if you are thinking about prank calling 911 just i want you to call me okay instead um on this uh twitch stream and um i'll i'll take your abuse i'll take your abu- your abu i said abuse i'll take that's what abuse is in canada abuse i'll take your abuse and um so that johnny doesn't have to or people like johnny Nine. What's a what's a G, G? I need a G one one. What what's G on the number scale? All right, I'm done with this thing that I'm saying. Thank you, Johnny. Call from Alex. Hello. Oh no way! I really got on. You did. What's up? What's your name? Uh, I'm Alex. How are you? Alex. I uh, I'm Lyle. Nice to meet you. What's going on? Um, uh, not much. Um, I cleaned my house up, sitting here with my cat. I, I now I had so many things I wanted to talk to you about, and I can't believe I got on. Um, that's cool. You cleaned your house. I'm, 
I don't, I won't shut up about this tour that I'm on, but uh, I, a large thing fueling me wanting to do this tour is, and I'm and I say that it sounds like I'm joking, but I'm saying this with a disturbing amount of sincerity. Is um, it's a it's a big excuse to not clean my house, and to also leave because the problem with the problem with continually avoiding cleaning your house to the point where it gets really gross is that you have to then the consequences of that if is that you have to live in that house. Yeah. But I I came up with a big brain play, Alex, a world tour that allows me to make my house clean dirty, and not have to live in it. I have my cake and eat it too. Mm, okay, okay. Tell me that's not genius. That that's a little genius. So, um, Alex, you said you had a billion. You said you had a lot of stuff you want to talk to me about. Anything? Anything jumping at your mind right now? Yeah. Um. Let me see here. So, I don't know. I I think I have to sue my friend. So I don't know. Okay, what happened? Yeah. Well, okay. So he came over to my house, and he like he got drunk, I guess, a little bit, but he, he like wrestled me in my bathroom, and like the sink fell off. Like, as he's wrestling me, and so water goes everywhere in my house, and it, like, messed up my hardwood floors, so now I don't know if I sue him, or, I like, he said he was going to help me pay for it, and then he, like, ghosted me. So, like, now I don't know what to do. Damn, how much, so, how, like, much are you, how much are you out? Uh, so far, I got the sink repaired, which was, like, a thousand bucks, but then the floors, like, the floors worked, so, like, he hasn't even inspected that yet, but I think it's going to be a couple grand. Mm. And your friend just totally ghosted you. Yeah, well, he said he had a, like, when when it happened, he said he had like, a switch. So, like, now I don't know if it's, like, like, why why, why would you do that in my house, you know? So, I don't know. It's Hold just on, weird, one, one like, second. One second. You said he had a switch? What does that mean? Yeah, I guess he went into, like, attack mood when we were, like, in the bathroom. So, I was, like, like that's what, that's what confused me. I was, like, dang, I thought we were friends. So, it's, like, a whole mess. So let me get this straight. He got so drunk that a switch flipped in his head to make him wrestle you and break your sink. Yeah, I don't even think he was that drunk. I, I just think he's just a little bit violent. Okay, you know. Well, I was gonna say if you do if you do decide to sue him, I don't think his defense is going to hold up very well in court. Yeah, no, I got like like text messages where he sent like he was like, "I'm sorry, uh, Alex, I have a switch in everything." So I, I think I got a little bit of proof, but then I'm stressed because I'm like, what if they don't believe me, you know? There's always that risk. And then, like, if they don't believe me, then it's like, wow, is that me, him, right? And the whole thing, you know? And that makes like, kind of um, serious. I'm like a deltish, you know? Like an, well, it's it's, I guess what I'm curious about is, so uh, so he owes you $3,000. But yeah, then you I need to hire... Well, so you then you need to hire. Oh, and then there's that too. So you lost. So he owes you a security deposit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so like then, a but you need to hire a lawyer. And how much is a fucking lawyer? Well, okay. So I called the lawyer, and well, like I call like the attorney people that get you in touch. But they say like under 10k, it's like small claims, so you, it's not even worth getting a lawyer. So it's like literally me talking to yeah. someone and explaining the whole thing. And then part of me is like, do I just soak up the cost and like take an L? And that's where I'm like, can I just suck it up and just like move on and just like cut him out? But like, I kind of want my money. Uh, you know, okay, I'm gonna tell you, I, I, I have a few thoughts. Um, yeah, that it sounds to me like if it's only for three thousand dollars, that you're not gonna be able to hire a lawyer because lawyer's probably gonna cost more than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're and all like. Kind of rough? And then you're all like, well, fuck, now I have to fucking uh, go to small. I don't know. How, how does small claims work again? You, like, have to go and be your own lawyer? Yeah, and you have to, like, talk to the judge and just tell the judge your side. And then he tells the judge his side. And then the judge makes a decision. But, Are like, you, you like, the when, okay, you talked about sucking it up and taking the L. Is that a, and by the way, uh, just sucking it up and taking the L, I don't, it's, there's no shame in never doing that. I don't think it's a shame in doing mm. that. Um, do you? Is part of your inkling to do that? Like you, you're looking at this process of going to small claims court and being like, "Oh, this just seems like a pain in the ass. I don't even feel like doing this." Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it seems like. It's like, oh, I gotta go down there, sell out paperwork, and yeah, then explain the it, and thing. then relive the whole thing all over again. Whole thing. Because it's yeah. been like a month, so it's like 
you know, this is like, you, you, this is the time I should either do something or just like, just pay for everything myself and move on. So that's where it's kind of just like... Mm. Well, I don't know. I mean, all right, it's 3000 bucks. Well, I I mean, look, filling out the paperwork and going to the court, do you have a job? What's your job? Uh, yeah, um, I do something awful, but um, I work in banking, like retail banking. So if you okay. really want to know, it's like it's like boring, though. So, like, I go, so, like, you know, if you don't, like, pay your taxes or something. So, like, if you don't pay your taxes, like, the government. No, I wouldn't know. Money. I always pay all my taxes on time, but go yeah. ahead. <laughs> But, like, so if you don't pay your taxes or your property taxes, there's, like, at every bank, every big bank at least, there's people that go into those accounts and take that money from your account, with, like, without you saying yes or no. So I do that uh, side of it. So, like, my dad garnish that wages. Thing, yeah, I do a terrible thing. So I feel really bad about it. So I'm like, I don't know how long I can do this for. But you, yeah, you, got a, you, got a, you got a stress going on in your life, Alex. Yeah, right now, it's so. It, usually I live a very quiet, like, just me and my cat, we just chill out you know and then i started letting people come over and that's when it's like you know you let other people into your <laughs> and then they break your fucking sink yeah yeah they break your fucking sink and you know they embarrass <laughs> me in the whole front in in front of the whole building and my landlord it's a whole thing all right uh like can i ask you you don't have to tell me you don't want to how much do you get paid a, uh, an hour doing that uh like 20 bucks all right and i mean how long do you think it would take you to go to small claims court uh, that would take me, this is like a day of PTO. Okay. So look, like, well, you make $20 an hour. It probably, I don't know the math here, but I guess what I'm trying to say is like the amount of work that it would take you to, you know, go to small claims and do the whole thing is probably, it's probably if you're just converting time hours into money, it's, it's probably worth the money. Going. Yeah, it's probably worth going. I keep hearing the same answer over and over again, and it's just like, dang, I really have to do this. But then it's also like, you think this person's your friend. So it's like, dang, you really put me in this That's situation where I have to, yeah, it's like a whole thing now. And like, what? And like the worst, oh, sorry. No, yeah, you go ahead. But like, the worst part is, is like, after all of this happened, I like kick him out. And like, that was the first time I ever kicked someone out the house. But like, he comes back and he's like, the worst part, and what makes me so mad is he comes back and he, he knocks on the door and he says, hey, he didn't ask if I was okay or anything. He was just like, can I get my beers? So, like, I'm, like, sitting here, and I'm like, fuck, I can't believe I, like, let this dude in my house. And, like, all you care about is the beer, not the thousands of dollars in damage you just did. You know, it's just kind of like, mm. So now I'm, like, kind of reevaluating my friendships, too. And it's like, you know, do I want to have friends in my life? Because then you have to take those <laughs> risks with those friends. It's like a whole so, thing. So now you're looking at all your friends, and you're like, which of you motherfuckers would break it's my next. sink. Yeah. Who's Which of you motherfuckers is next? Run away. Who's going to, who's going to, you know, rip my refrigerator door off and throw it at my dog? You yeah. Know? Like my cat was People here too. So he you, was yeah. getting wet. It was like a whole thing. And I'm like, dang, which one, like, which one is next? Like, so now I'm like, do I want to hang out with people anymore? And I'm like, yeah, cause like a part of me does, but then part of me is like, I was doing fine on my own. You know, you just like keep it pushing. You set your timeline and your goals. All right. So I don't know. But well, look, Alex, I'm going to tell you, well, here's, I mean, look, like, first of all, I, 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 I am a big proponent of the idea that there ain't ever any shame in, in, in taking that L, taking that big L, putting it in your mouth and taking a big old gulp of water, swallowing mm -hmm. it and shitting it out. You know, ain't no, ain't no shame in that. So if that's what you want to do, if you're like, ah, fuck this, then, you know, no shame. Um, but also, mathematically speaking, eh, it's probably a financially decent decision to go and get your money back on small claims if you feel like you can prove it. But, okay, and then let's go to this thing, right? You had a friend, you trusted this guy, you thought this guy was cool, and then he goes and wrestles you and breaks your sink, and so now you're like, what the fuck? Which of my other friends are about to come in my house and destroy my shit? I think, uh, in general, right, you kind of find what you're looking for. So if you walk around uh, with these these this new set of goggles that makes you look at everybody and that you meet as a as a filthy 
Sink Destroyer, yeah. then <laughs> then I, I think that that's what you'll find. But don't let you know this one experience that you have with someone completely warp your idea of all of humanity. You know that would be that would be really letting uh letting homie win. win. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't want him to win because that's where I'm at. Like, because like it's like do we let because like like taking the L means like he kind of wins. You know. No, like, I don't like, think that's what that means. Win. I don't think that's what that means. I don't think that's what that means because I, th- I now look. I don't. I think I don't think you letting the three thousand bucks roll off your back is letting him win. Uh, but I do think. You now going through life with a deep sense of mistrust for everyone you meet is letting him win. Because that's going to, because look, $3,000, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of money, but um, the, the we're ta- this is your, this is your, this is your psyche we're talking about. All right. Mm-hmm. That shit you got to protect, you know. So don't let, don't, don't, don't let, don't let that get fucked over by the sink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Al. For sure. For sure. What kind of sink was it? Was it granite? No, it was like ceramic. It's really ugly too. And like, I'm trying to do the math on like how they calculated a thousand dollars because it's the same sink. They just put new legs and new pipes on. So I'm like, where do we you get a thousand dollars from? It's true. You could probably. I mean, it sounds like. You know, that's the most annoying thing, right? Is when, like, it's a shitty sink. And they're still like it's three thousand dollars. You could probably go on it. You could probably buy your own fucking sink and put it. I in. know. I could have got a nice one from Home Depot. Three hundred bucks. Don't it's lose sleep the over the. Sink. Don't lose sleep over the sink. All right, life. You got more going on in your life. To you know, you will you will be happy again, and you will be pissed off again. I assure you of those two things. Yeah. Like okay, that makes sense. It's gonna be worse than this. Okay, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's I hope that's not the main thing you took away from this conversation, but um, no, no. <laughs> Alex, is there anything else you want to say to me or the people of the computer or Eddie Murphy before we go? Um yeah, one thing. Um I listened to your podcast like for the past like nine months. You got me through all the last summer. Uh it's really awesome. Thanks. Um man. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Thank you. And I love them. I like the like the two hour ones, like the ones that are closer to two hours. Awesome. Well, I started. What happened was, um, I was releasing them once a week, and then they were two hours. And now I release them twice a week, and they're one hour. So, you know, I kind of split them up a little bit. I couldn't if, if, for me to release two two-hour podcasts a week. Oh yeah, be, that's like four hours. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah, that'd be that, okay. That, yeah, yeah, that, that, that'd be a little crazy, but everything in moderation. Yeah. <laughs> Does this one go on the podcast? Yeah, I'll put this on the podcast. Oh, okay. I don't know which one, but it'll it'll make it on there eventually. I'll be listening Maybe regardless. Year, so. <laughs> well, goddamn, thank you, Alex. You have a good one, and um, I, I hope you get your... Uh, cosmically, I believe you will get some version of your $3,000 back. Okay, I hope so. Hey, you have a good I one. I hope so. Universe, look out. <laughs> Bye. Expert.